Hello and welcome to another episode of Don't Shit on the Bus podcast. I'm your host, Adam Omokais, tuning in all the way from Los Angeles, California, for episode number 68 with my good friend, Paris Mazzone. And Paris, I don't think I've ever said your last name out loud, so if I said it wrong, you can kick my ass later. I'm sorry. Paris is an amazing music photographer, good friend, and you know, you might have seen her work with Limp Bizkit, New Found Glory, Godsmack, some other artists. She's just a great touring photographer. And today we got down to one of my favorite topics, and that is working with artists. And that is the difference between kind of working with artists and working for them. And I know we've talked about this concept before on the podcast, but it's important because it really separates, in my opinion, the different types of photographers out there. And my favorite type of work is the type of work where an artist works with another artist. It's kind of like a collaborative effort. You can tell that both parties contributed to it. And when that happens, the final product is all the more amazing. Of course, we talked about other things such as how Paris got into the industry, some tips on getting hired for tour and just photographer things. It's nice to always have somebody, you know, cut from the same cloth. Is that the saying? It's nice to have somebody like that on the on the podcast because it's a little bit easier to relate because, you know, Paris and I, we do we do similar things. But thank you so much for coming on, Paris. Thank you so much for all the patrons for keeping this ad free and making this possible. I could not do this every week without you. That is not an exaggeration. That is very literal. I really appreciate your weekly contributions. And if you want to sign up, become a patron, support the podcast, just www.dontshitonthebus.com. All the information is available for you right there. So with that being said, I will let Paris take it away from here and I will see you next week on Don't Shit on the Bus. Thank you. Hello, Paris, and welcome to Don't Shit on the Bus. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> How are you? Did my voice change too much? No, no, it I was great. Podcast? I just, it, the title of it just threw me off a little bit again. <laughs> I knew what it was, but it was, you know. Yeah, for such an abrasive thing, I try to say it as casually and beautifully as I can. Yeah, you 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 said shit really quick, like don't shit on the bus. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> hey, man, that that's what I'm talking about. I mean, before you got on, we were kind of talking about we know each other, we've been friends with each other, but then I'm like thinking back to the times we've hung out, and I don't know if we've ever actually just hung out. Yeah, I think it's like, oh, we're working a show, and like it's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? Great, and then it's you know, move on, taking pictures. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, I feel like I have a a good handful of people that I feel like I know, but do I actually? I don't, yeah, kinda. I don't know. I just also got the Oculus, so everything is crazy to me right now. Like, what's real? <laughs> the Oculus being uh, VR. Yes. Oh, what are yeah. you uh, What are you delving into on there? You know, I tried to watch the Foo Fighters stream the other night, and it wasn't working. But apparently now it is, so I'm going to watch that tonight. I'm just playing fishing games. Because okay. I like fishing and it really feels like you're there. I know it's so stupid, but they give sounds and, the, and you're engulfed in this video world. And it really um, it can change your whole vibe just by, by being in a different place. It's pretty cool. Maybe I need to. I have one that I was gifted. I think it's an older model, but I might need to break it out and start doing fishing games because, you know, all I wanted to do were shooting games. And that's probably not the right vibe. I should probably do fishing. Games. I get disoriented with the shooting games. Like I get like dizzy and stuff. Fishing, you're just chill. You're like listening to like bugs and shit. And you're just like, all right. And then you catch fish. And then I'm yeah. in my living room again. And it's kind of sucks. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I mean, before I have a guest on here, I know we haven't hung out, but I always try to think about what are my memories with Paris? And like, where did she first enter my like awareness? And I always think back to. Of course, I know you through Guy Sykes. He's our mutual friend. I think he's our yeah. most mutual friend. He was a tour, amazing tour manager. But I also always think back to, and I actually looked up a video to make sure I wasn't crazy, Limp Biscuit 2013, Rock'em Ring, Rock'em Park. I was side stage watching them. And you were shooting. And I was like, I don't know if I actually have to check the screenshot. I think you had red hair at the time. Yeah. But you matched Limp Biscuit because they were yeah, like, that's... he had like a red head on. And I was like, who's this photographer? And this is cool. The thing is, like, I kind of <laughs> adapt to whatever band I'm with. Like, the thing, I... You're like a chameleon. I'm genuinely fans of, of most of the bands that I work with. 
and I grew up with them, especially like Limp Bizkit, New Found Glory, Godsmack. Like that was yeah. legit. Those were my favorite bands. So that's amazing. I sort of dress for the tour, but it's not in a poser sort of way. Like I actually dressed and liked all of those bands like in real time growing up. So, <laughs> you know, when when I'm on a Limp Bizkit tour, I can wear things that I could not wear on a Godsmack tour because they would totally make fun of me. But like, I'll wear like not matching shit and like get kind of crazy. <laughs> and then Godsmack tour, black only Godsmack crew shirts. Like that's it. <laughs> well, I love to hear that the bands you're fans of are the ones you tour with. Now, when you enter this industry, were you like, I like these bands, I want to tour with them? Or did you like a ton of bands and you kind of were just like, any of these will work? How did you find the line to them? It's, it was weird. Like it just happened that way. Like actually, no, it didn't. It was kind of a thing where, so how it all started, like actually going on tour was I grew up in Boca Raton, Florida and okay. I would go to shows all the time. And Papa Roach was my favorite band. Like they're in that group. It was Limp Bizkit, Papa Roach, New Found Glory, Godsmack, Hanson, a few more. So it's a good list. Um, yeah. <laughs> Very sing alongable list. Everyone's like, very oh, sing alongable. Like you like this band. You would like this other band. And I go, no, you don't understand. It's like, I like a band, but I don't like a genre. I guess that's a lot yeah. of new metal. But anyway, I went to a Papa Roach show when I was 16 and I was hanging out by the bus because I wanted to meet the band like a 16 year old would. And yeah. I was with my stepmom, who was like 29 at the time. So she was young. So it was cool. Oh, I got my cool stepmom. We're going to shows. And she's taking me and she's waiting by the bus. This is sick. So <laughs> her friend actually ended up dating one of the guys in the crew on the Pop Roach tour. So they like got married from that night. So I was like, you owe me your life. <laughs> oh, wow. They ended up getting married. Yeah, they actually got married that's from amazing. meeting that night. I mean, it was years later, but it progressed into that. So that's how I started touring is that dude started a vip company and i went to college and everything so this is years later and he's like hey would you want to go on the road like taking the vip photos and i was like yeah and um they're like okay i flew out to california you know in my mind i'm like i'm gonna take documentary type photos because that's what i've done that's what i went to school for like that's oh, what cool. i've always done so i was like yeah i'll do the vip thing but i'm gonna just sneak my way in there and that's what i did chris i went on tour with blondie from was my first like bus tour and chris the guitar player he's a photographer too so he saw me having a camera and we became friends and it was sick and i photographed them and it was it was great so that sort of papa roach connection when i was 16 turned into actually touring when i was 25 and then just the connections through that, like met Godsmack because I went on a tour with them and then met Papa Roach through that. So it was all kind of connected all through that one show. That's amazing. And I love that, you know, you're like, I'm going to do the VIP, but I know what I'm really going to do here. Oh, and yeah. you kind of part, you kind of made your way through. And it's crazy because you've been touring now for 10 years and it sounds like you started on a pretty good level. I'm assuming Blondie was not in a van. Yeah, no. Yeah, we were in we we're in a bus. That was my first bus tour. I actually did tour with my boyfriend's band at the time, Protagonist, and that was a van and trailer. And okay. that was exactly what you think it was. It was like, <laughs> so we slept in the van and people's feet smelled and that's, it was fine. Like that was like a two, three week tour. And I was like, okay, I know how this is. And then I went straight to Blondie and I didn't want to look back. Yeah, I can't blame you. What a cool first artist to tour with. I mean, obviously Protagonist, technically but you know a full yeah <laughs> a cool first artist to work for that's pretty awesome oh it was awesome and i had no clue what i was doing at all they were like we're gonna pay you 500 dollars a week and i'm like <laughs> cool sick <laughs> that's money awesome money. and then i actually got there and they were like oh yeah we're paying you 700 i was like yes this is great whoa 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 that's not usually how it works i know it was i don't know maybe i was doing such a great job but uh <laughs> Yeah, it was really cool, but I had no clue. I didn't know how to get on a bus. I didn't know etiquette. I didn't know any, I didn't know I needed to advance to do VIP. Like I didn't <laughs> know any of that. Like the production manager is like, you need to like call these venues beforehand and make sure, cause there was tickets involved. And like, I okay. had no idea. I was sent out like take pictures 
of the VIP people. And then I was like setting it up and I, yeah, I had no idea. So I learned pretty quickly. Well, I mean, it's good that you kind of learned on the go and you were open to being like, oh, this is what my job entails. It's not like you're like, oh, I have to advance. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do the advancing. But right. do you have any stories? Because you said you didn't know any bus etiquette. You didn't even know how to lock a bus. Do you have any stories of maybe your path to learning things that were less than ideal or maybe more embarrassing than you intended for them to be or you wish for them to be? I think they knew I was, okay. it was my first tour. So they kind of, it was apparent. Yeah. I, they, they knew. Well, actually, they asked me, have you been on tour before? Like the tour manager, Cheryl, um, who I, I'm so friends with. And she asked me, like, is this your first tour? And I was like, no, because I <laughs> went on tour with protagonists. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, I've been on tour before. Totally. But yeah, they showed me how to, to lock the bus. And I'm pretty like self contained. Like I knew that, okay. I am low on the totem pole. And I always kind of feel that way, even though it sucks. Like, even though I've been with Godsmack forever, I'm like, okay, I understand my stuff is not show critical. So I'm just going to let you do your thing. And I will just sort of fill in the gaps here and I'll take what's left. Um, And that's sort of been my thing throughout my career, doing that and just just being easy to deal with. Um, And I think that that from the beginning is, is still something that carries through till now is to just be easygoing and not have to like demand stuff and not complain about, Oh, I got to wait for my hotel room and stuff like that. Yeah. So you didn't get it. I mean, I really like that term you use show critical and that might be a normal term that I just don't know about, but I, I, it's a perfect way of explaining, you know, a photographer's job, I think we can agree is very important in this world, right? It's, it's good to get photos. It's good to convey what happened to the show. But like you said, it's not critical to making the show happened. If the photographer got sick, none of the fans of the show would know. Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting because right now I'm in the process of like trying to find my next tour. Right. So, yeah. um, my boyfriend is an audio engineer, so he does front of house and he is show critical. They need him. <laughs> um, <laughs> I agree. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we're both like trying to find tours at the same time. And it's, it's so different from one another because He'll get calls and it's like, oh, we need someone. Oh, great. This guy. And it's like, okay, I need to hit up management and not do I only need to convince them that they need me. Like I need to convince them that I am the best out of people that they may know. So it's like a double sale. And it's like it's it's a lot more difficult than any other touring crew. And it's also weird to think about like the money. Right there's crew that gets paid this much there's crew that gets paid this much and then like where do us as creatives lay in that it's very weird because there are some backline guys that look at what we do and they're like why are you here they don't get yeah. it they yeah. they don't understand and then god forbid they figure out that you make more money than them they are pissed you know and they don't see what goes on behind the scenes like you know, I get calls at 10 o'clock at night saying, I need this photo right now. And and I don't get yeah. paid for that, you know, and then just all the planning and the editing and stuff when they're sleeping, I'm still editing photos and they don't see any of that. And that's fine. I don't know how I got on crew versus photographers right now, but hey, man, you had some things you wanted to get out and I'm here. To, I'm here to listen to them. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. to listen. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just interesting comparing the two and seeing who what's needed and what's not and is it really not needed but it is yeah and i think the thing that makes photographers unique as well is of course backline is an important job but being a photographer can be a quite personal job so not only do you need to sell what you do but who you are and you know sure. that's why you're mentioning you know how important it is to kind of know your place important it is to you know be easy to work with and i forget how you phrased it but you know noticing your place have you seen other people photographers or maybe any job who didn't quite know their place and kind of learned from them or what's your what's your vibe on that i always tiptoe because i do know that i'm expendable at you know at a certain point so i'm always i don't know if i've seen bad examples of people i've definitely seen people that are sort of this is my job and it's very important and you got to get out of my way because (laughs) 
<laughs> all, all the internet's gonna see this <laughs> and it's like yeah but if the show fucks up then people are gonna hear about that too so i'm always the fly on the wall i try not to be on the stage like a ton where people can see me unless otherwise unless i'm told otherwise which happens a lot like it's they want you to be seen oh yes so oh, let's hear about from, this Sully from godsmack like i don't know what got over him one day but he was like i want you in the middle right next to me like just stand there like i want you filming and i'm like what and he's like yeah get over there and i'm like all right so i'm literally standing next to him on stage like in the middle of everything and then there there's also he'll also bring me out like for a song and he's like everyone this is paris say hi to her and they like i'll scream and i'm videotaping and it's it's like a whole thing that's awesome it's funny it's funny because i don't get nervous at all but i probably should like <laughs> tripping and like everyone's looking at me yeah he he's like super into filming and getting like cool content i remember he was yelling at one of our crew guys and I stopped filming and he's like, why are you, why did you stop filming? And I was like, this is awkward. <laughs> and he's like, no, I want you to get everything. I want you to get all of this. This is like, this is the real shit. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Okay. And that's a lot, actually a lot easier for me because I don't have to determine like, when am I welcome? When am I not? I'm yeah. just always there. And if it, if he really doesn't want something, he'll just tell me no. And I know not to take it personally, but same thing with, um, I just shot, rancid for a few shows and tim armstrong was like yeah i want you to you know get in front of me in front of him and yeah. take a picture like standing in front of him on stage and i was like facing him or the crowd yeah facing him like oh wow just stand in front of him and i was like all right and like i got cool photos like but it's also not like i don't think the shot is cool enough to warrant me blocking everyone's view for you know whatever five seconds or whatever it's just i think it's distracting but he wanted it and it was cool and i guess for five seconds out of the show it really doesn't matter but it is interesting that you know some bands almost see a photographer as like a status symbol like i have this person they're around with me um i'm cool and it is cool <laughs> i wish i could afford someone to film me that's my next step yeah the photographer's got a photographer on tour with yeah them. i think that'd be sick because I, I think that our job is cool enough that we could have like a re, we could do like a reality show and it would be about us being on tour with a band because everyone's seen the band documentary. We, we get it. Yeah. Yeah. We all know what that's about. We want to see the person who gets the behind the scenes. We want to see behind the scenes and behind the scenes. That's very meta. Yeah. You know, I'm telling you, VR is getting crazy. It's, it's messing with my mind. Next thing you know, we're going to have you on tour shooting behind the scenes while fishing, but everybody else is also <laughs> fishing, but you're in VR. It's just going to get confusing and interesting simultaneously. I'm in. I love it. Well, I love how all these examples kind of play to what you said about your, you know, your versatility and how you're kind of chameleon-esque, whether it be how you're dressing or how you're acting or, you know, what direction you're taking from the artist. I think that that is so important. Uh, we talk a lot about kind of reading the room and going with the flow. And I think this really talks to that. And uh, I don't know. It's good to hear that validated a little bit and hear it in practice. Yeah. I swear I didn't plant it. Yeah, I actually like wrote an email and I was like, you know, by the way, I'm a good hang. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I thought it was <laughs> smart cool. to put that in there. <laughs> you know, like I I've toured with like older people, like Roth, like younger people. And I can get along with anyone like it's yeah. and that is that that's a huge thing. Like a lot of people ask me like, oh, how do you get these tours? And it's like the most, you know, a not specific question. And I'm like, you got to think about these people that they're looking essentially, depending on the tour, they're looking for a roommate to work for them. I was like, yeah. if you can't live with someone it's not going to happen. Like it's, it's going to be weird. If you have a weird vibe or you don't gel, it's just, especially with what we do, we have to be, get so personal. It's, it's just like yeah. an extra step. How would you, I know you said that people ask you that and it's kind of a broad question, but for somebody who's a photographer and you know, they're, they're shooting their local shows, they're going to concerts, they're posting it online. And their goal is to go from that to touring with somebody. 
how do they go from that position to being on tour with somebody and conveying that, hey, I'm a good hang? Is it is it all about, you know, meeting somebody that does VIP and kind of finding your way in that way? Or what do you suggest to people, if anything at all? Yeah, I think there's a few different ways. And that's the hard thing to say. It's not like uh, it's not like you started a company and you work your way up. It's like, OK, yeah. maybe you meet a manager and you click with that manager and you become friends and then you get a tour. Literally seven years later that's yeah. the thing like people <laughs> don't realize that just because you meet someone and they have a job uh, opening it doesn't mean you're gonna get it like i'm getting random jobs from people i've never gotten a job from but i've met 10 years ago and yeah. it's like okay you've watched me grow for 10 years and now finally you're ready to pull the trigger cool you know what i mean i'm here i'm here for that that's the thing is is there's no one way I just tell people network and be cool, like be a real person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Just be real and give them what they don't know they need. And then they will find a way to keep you around. I remember I actually started touring with Newfound Glory. They wanted me, they were having a book come out okay. and there was, um, it's like all their shows, all old flyers and stuff. And they go, we want to take you on warp tour. But just for this one tour, it's to promote the book and that's it. And I was like, cool. And then I was like, whatever, dude, like I'm going to make this a full time thing. <laughs> and yeah, I did. You're you know, going to because... you're going to you're going to need me. I get it. You're, <laughs> you're going to love a... this shit. And, <laughs> and that's that. And they did. So it's it's a progression. It's not like, oh, I'm going to be this band's photographer for 10 years. It's like, oh, let's take a step, like get to photograph their show once. And then if they like the photos, maybe you'll do it again. And then maybe you can ask to go out for a week and then maybe you'll go out for a tour. But people are just like, I want to go on tour. You can do merch and also take photos. That's one way as well. You know, yeah, double up, find a job where they can, you know, maybe they can't afford a photographer, but they can afford a merch person. And then you can take yeah, photos. Exactly. And so, I mean, if you were to rate, I think the best way to think of it is and maybe you can agree or disagree, is your photos kind of get their attention, but then what really gets you the gig is who you are. And like you said, sometimes it takes 10 years. Do you think that's just people kind of keeping track, vibing like, oh, she's touring or they're touring with so-and-so, how long have they been with them? Okay, well, if they can tour with this person for that long, they're probably a good hang. Let's try them out. You know, does it just take a while? I think so. I think that also it's so weird because I was also talking with my boyfriend, Eric, about this, of how the bands that you're associated with might as well be you. Like people see like, oh, they worked with, you know, she worked with Godsmack. So let's, she'd be good for Disturbed. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like not really the case, um, which kind of sucks. But a lot of the time you're represented by the bands that you're working for, which is weird. But say like I worked with Marilyn Manson for a few tours and I still keep it on my resume because I want people to know that I'm tough, you know? <laughs> you dealt with <laughs> yeah <laughs> we don't like, have to get into do, that too deeply that. but i understand I what you're saying exactly taking that information and knowing that you're kind of represented or associated with or branded by the people that you tour with more or less is there you know have you turned down jobs because of this because of people's perception for people or are you just very mindful of what jobs you take honestly like i i don't judge a book because if i did you know, I would, everyone says like, oh, Sully's the worst, like a Godsmack. And dude, he's not, he's <laughs> awesome. Like, I never said that just to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> Sully from Godsmack. And he's, he's awesome. And if I thought, if I, if I took any sort of, oh yeah, this person's bad advice, I wouldn't work with anyone because everyone yeah. has something to say that where someone was in a bad mood one day and then I got a bad rap. So yeah, I, I try to, you know, keep an open mind with that sort of thing. And then if it's, if it's not a fit, it's not a fit, but I've never really come across that where it's so bad except Manson, which I did quit, but that's really the only one, honestly. Well, I mean, it's good to know that you have a line. I mean, we, we don't have to go into the specifics of it, but I understand not working with Manson. That makes sense. And, you know, moving forward, I hope that, you know, do you ever feel like you're kind of, you mentioned, you know, you work for Godsmack, therefore you work well with, for example, Disturbed. Do you ever feel like Sometimes it's limiting. Are you like trying to work with Hanson? Are you trying to work with somebody else so people can be like, oh, she works with pop artists as well. We can hire her. 
Yeah, that's actually my next step, honestly. <laughs> Diversify. I, um, yeah, it's it's weird because I know I know it's kind of like a different animal with pop. Like I know there's a lot more people to go through and I know that the approvals are hard and I know it depends by yeah. which artist you work for. But I kind of love the vibe of a lot of the things that I do have to go back to my 15 year old self in making that person like excited. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I did the whole new metal thing. And now I just, I want to see, I love when fans are super excited and I love how pop fans are like younger kids and they're just genuinely happy. And I, yeah. I vibe off of that, you know? So that's, one of the reasons why I do want to get more into pop, but yeah, I am kind of pigeonholed right now into the rock scene and it, you know, it's because of the people that I know and those are the calls that I get, but let's put it out into the universe just for the hell yeah. of it. I mean, we've got some industry people listening to this podcast. I hope, I think I know <laughs> who do you want to tour with in the pop world? I just want it for my own sake too. So I can keep my ears and eyes peeled, but for people who are listening, I honestly would want to go with someone like up and coming like i just think it would be cool to like start something fresh in someone young you know or lady gaga that that would be good too <laughs> well if you are lady gaga or a young fresh and up and coming or both yeah. that'd be cool um <laughs> but also have money here is she like, is yeah <laughs> <laughs> also young have and money. fresh upcoming but also have backing of someone who's very wealthy i i think you narrowed the list down to like four I think yeah. that's what you did. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Get at me. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, man. That's funny. Well, I, I definitely can relate to the wanting to tour with things that make you feel excited. And personally, one of my favorite live bands of all time is Limp Bizkit. So when you agreed to do this podcast, I was excited because I told Connor, I was like, I'm just going to ask her what each member of Limp Bizkit is like individually. I'll um, tell you. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to waste everybody's time with my own uh, endeavors. but. I, I do like touring with them. Like I, the video I found was from 2013, which if my math checks out, that's about a year after you started touring. Is that correct? Or no, you started in 2012? I think 2012. Yeah, that sounds okay. right. I no, that guessing. I started touring with Limp Biscuit. You've been touring for 10 years or longer? Um, 2010. Okay. My math is a little off or my Wikipedia searches are unreliable. So or my, <laughs> my Google searches are unreliable. Let's go with the latter and give me the Cut me some slack, but okay, 12 years. Well, a few <laughs> years after you started touring with Limbiscuit, I was wondering, like, you started with Blondie and then you went to, where'd you go from Blondie? Godsmack. And then Limbiscuit? And then Limbiscuit, yeah. So when you're touring with these artists, like, do you just have one hand on the camera and the other one's just punching people in the face? Because I, <laughs> they cannot, like, I feel like there'd be so much energy flowing through you for these sets. I love new metal, so I might be biased, but. I have to say that, Limp Biscuit is sort of a whole different thing. Like, whatever. I don't want to be lame, but you get it. I, I don't yeah. go in the crowd for Limp Biscuit. Oh my God, forget it. But yeah. there, there have been some points where I've been watching the show and I've, I'm photographing or whatever. And sometimes I just take like a second and look around and I'm like, this is fucking awesome. And that yeah. is, I've had that happen with Limp Biscuit like a handful of times. And it doesn't really happen that often anymore just because you know we've been doing it forever but with Limp Bizkit it does and it's sick especially some of the Europe shows like they're just so huge and people are so into it and it's awesome the energy is just great Europe does rock right yeah it's it's cool and in the stuff that I create with Limp Bizkit is awesome too um it's just we Fred is super creative and he likes to do like weird shit and a lot of it is unreleased there's like a ton of stuff that we've shot that's just like never gonna see the light of day but it was super fun to shoot can you talk to any of it or is it like confidential like unreleased and because it's yeah, no no you know. it's just like weird set up stuff that we would do like mini movie kind of things like has nothing to do with the band do you have examples of are there any that are released that you could give an example of if that makes sense or people could look up no not really so every time Fred Durst shoots a mini movie, it's too weird. <laughs> it's, it's not too happening. Weird. You're like, here we go again. Uh, yeah, it's just for the hard drive. It. Yeah. We shot a music video for uh, the song Endless Slaughter. And yeah. that is kind of an example of how weird things get. So if you look up Endless Slaughter and just see it, it was actually pretty cool. I It was his idea and I almost died. We were in Poland and it was 
we were shooting four one shot scenes for this music video because there's like four sections to the song. And we started just me and Fred at the back of the crowd. And then we worked our way up like in the crowd. So not only is it like a Limp Bizkit mosh pit, it's us like everyone wanting to be in the video. Yes. And us just going through the crowd. It was absolutely insane. I didn't die, but I was close. It was it was the craziest thing I've ever been. So walk us through what this is like, because there's a whole part of the job where it's like show up, take photos, get along with the band. But there's another part where you've got these, you know, whether it be Sully or Fred or somebody from Blondie, you have people coming to you, artists, unfiltered, which isn't something you usually get. Usually it goes artist, manager, person you're working with. But when you go direct to artists, there's nobody to say no, because usually creatives aren't telling somebody no. So how yeah. do you take these wild requests, wrap your head around them and make them happen? Like, what is it like working on one and one on one with these, in my opinion, you know, true artists? They've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So it's awesome because I thrive on collaboration. Like I 100 okay. percent would rather work with the band than just work for the band, you know? So yes, yeah, love whatever ideas you have, like bring them to me. And like I started off as a documentary photographer, so I'm always like adapting to my situation. You know what I mean? I'm trying to create something out of normal. So if you have an idea, that's even easier for me. Like I can be like, oh, yeah, I got this idea, this idea. And, you know, Sully does that a lot, too. He's like, I want to do this and we'll do a lot of stuff together. Like we the last music video we shot, I think I shot it and he edited it. <laughs> like he's like <laughs> hands on, like loves doing that shit. Like I taught him Final Final Cut Pro. Get I still get calls. I can't get this to work. Why is this? Doing? And I'm like, ah, he's like my grandfather. Yeah, like, get those for my mom. FaceTime trying to learn Final Cut, and I'm like, he's like, why does it do that? And I'm like, I don't know, but it does, and this is the way to fix it. And he's yeah. like, thank you. <laughs> You're like, I know the answer to that because I know how to use Google. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, I feel like most no, of those questions can't are. Google. Are you kidding me? He has me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying, you know, I don't know about you, but whenever like somebody who's older or less experienced with computers asks me a question, they think I know everything, but really I just know how to correctly yeah. Google that thing. <laughs> it's yeah. when they tell me the thing and it's wrong because they don't understand it enough to communicate what it is, that it's impossible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's I got a funny. question from my girlfriend's mom the other day that was, where are the rest of my blue files? And oh. I was like, I was like, oh my goodness. I don't know what that folders, means. Folders, right? Yeah, they were the folders. And I was yeah. like, for future reference, these are the folders. Blue files are the folders. But man, that is funny. Well, teaching artists uh, how to use Final or Premiere Final Cut, that would be a wild ride. So respect. Yeah. <laughs> he's good though. That. He's got, he's got, he's got, he's got a lot better. He's trying to replace you, Paris. You better watch yeah. out. <laughs> he's going to get a, going to get a uh, selfie stick and you're going to be out of your gig. <laughs> the thing is, I don't really enjoy editing. I do oh, not perfect. like video editing. So it's great for me. He has a very specific like way. I and mean, you know, everyone has their own way of editing, like yeah. to music, especially. He has a very specific way. He's like, that's not on on the beat. It's not on the beat. And I was like, yes, it is. And we were just <laughs> like getting fights. I'm the musician. And, like, obviously, he's music. correct. Like, yeah. obviously he knows music, but I'm like, it doesn't flow right visually. And yeah. And we get, oh, fights, man. but it's, uh, you know, you've been doing this for 12 years now. And I'm sure the job as started as more of a music photographer and kind of has turned into, like you said, you did a music video or you're shooting shorts or, you know, you're editing stuff now. Do you think that as this job has kind of changed over the last 10 years and content has become more needed, that there is room for just photography or do you need to? diversify to tour with artists well that that's my big thing right now is i would love to just photograph like 100 yeah. percent. like i i think it's super hard to wrap your brain around doing two things at once especially when it's the live show it's like okay i know this really cool jump shot's gonna happen right now should i video it or should i take a picture did i do that yesterday like you have to be very organized and it kind of takes the fun out of it honestly <laughs> Where yeah. I just kind of like to flow and capture like what happens, like the artistry of it. But, you know, of course, you know where you're photographing and 
videoing the same set every night. So you have plenty of time to get everything. It's fine. I think as social media grows and it's already huge, obviously, but I do think that there's going to be a point where there can be a photographer and a videographer out on tour. And mm-hmm. that's going to sort of be the normal. I think it should. I think there should be a videographer and an editor and a photographer for these like huge yeah. tours. Like, I think it's for the amount of money that these bands spend on production and trucks and crew and, you know, having, you know, you have 10 people for audio, you have 10 people for lighting, and then you have one person creating content. It seems kind of, it's, it seems kind of crazy to me. So I do think, and I think it would be smart if artists started taking out more content creators. And I hate that we're called content creators now, but we are. Yeah, I think that I think that it's feeding the machine of the internet is obviously very important now. And I just think it's going to be even more. And I think if people were smart, they would hire more people to take care of that and post it all. That's a whole nother, a whole nother thing that, when a tour has a social media person, it is the best because I don't want to have to come up with copy and times to post and I have to remember to do it while I'm shooting this thing and then a liner for this and then a photo shoot here. And it's like, it's a lot for one person to do. And people would think, oh, you're just taking pictures. That's so cool. It's the best job. You're so lucky. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, yeah, I'm doing the job of what should be at least five people. I've seen in the past, I think it was specifically with Jared Leto, who, you know, has a mind and an eye for photography, but he had like multiple video people on the road and then one person just logging footage all day because they were shooting so much. And I was like, I think he's got the right idea. And this was like yeah. eight years ago. So I don't know where he's at now in his content, but it was, I think awesome. he was ahead of the group. So if you have multiple skill sets that you're able to perform on the road, ideally like photo, video, maybe you're posting on socials, do you think it gets to a point where, like you said, you know, it's hard to remember and do all these different things. Do you think it gets to a point where it degrades the quality of that content? And if so, does that matter anymore? Or is it just kind of content is the name of the game and the quality of it's, you know, more or less irrelevant? I try to preface the tour with like, if you want both, you're going to get less of each, <laughs> you know, yeah. like you have to make your expect- expectations like, bring them down for each one. And it's not the quality. It's just the amount of it. Because you want to maintain your quality of it and you can't do as much of it at that quality. For sure. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's too much. Like uh, I usually deliver like 40 to 50 photos a night and then Mm -hmm. I'm taking live video and, you know, making a, making a video maybe once a week of all the live stuff. If it was just photo, there'd be more photos. Do we need to post more photos? No. <laughs> is the quality is the does the quality go up because I maybe took a photo, I took a video of something that should have been a photo? Yeah. So it's kind of a trade-off, but I think if you can manage that and give a consistent a good quality consistent feed, then that's the goal. Okay. So in your ideal world, just to break this down a little bit more, we can both agree when we started or back, you know, 12 years ago, people just brought out a photographer. And that rule, like you said, that really meant, you know, somebody who might be teaching the band how to do social networking, might be writing their copy for them, might be showing them what Instagram is even. I remember those days. And, <laughs> you know, now it's progressed. What are the different subsets that kind of exist under the term photographer these days, like maybe it would help for us to think about if you were to create the creative team for like a massive pop star, what all would you put in that creative team within reason? Like maybe we can max out at like six people or something. (laughs) (laughs) I think that a still photographer for sure, a videographer, honestly, like a creative director, like maybe there's someone that's in charge of the beast controlling the whole team like we need this to make sure you get this shot i can't tell you how many times like i've gotten like an email like oh man like did you happen to get this and it's like a shot of the guitar that he uses for one song but a close-up of this like i'm just like really like so if there was good communication between and that's what probably a creative director would do is sort of be the middle person between the content team and management and the artist. Cause that's yeah. another thing too, where 
you work so closely with the artist. And then if they're looking for something that you're not doing, it's kind of awkward for the artist to directly tell you like, oh, you're not really, you're not really getting what I want here. So yeah, that's what I think the creative director would do. But yeah, I think that's it. Photo, video, someone in charge of it. And then an editor, video editor would be sick. And that's ideal. Like that's four, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's great. I agree with you. That'd be cool. I think it'd be fun to be in charge of that kind of thing because you'd really have to have an under... I agree though. It's And you said it kind of normally, but it might come off as not normal to other people on why is it so awkward to tell an, for an artist to tell somebody that they're doing something wrong? Like, can you break that down for people <laughs> who are like, well, why wouldn't they just say it? I mean, is like, why is that awkward? Because the thing is you're creating art for an artist. So I just had this conversation with my friends. It's... <laughs> It's very difficult when someone's telling you that your stuff is not what they want. And I'm like, listen, you're hired by this person. So you should, yeah, you have your, your voice and your look and I get it, but they're hiring you to do a job for them. This is their band, not yours. So you have to like, if you don't vibe with them, then work for someone else that you do. If you if you want to keep this job and you like them, do what they want. You know, they're, yeah. they're going back to Sully, like he'll take over editing and I'm like, that's wrong. That's wrong. But it's your band. Go ahead. You know, yeah. <laughs> like it's, there's some things where I'm like, okay, that's cheesy, but that's what you want. So I guess that's what we're doing. And my name's on that. So whatever. It, there's also like a, a point where I made this point the other day, where if you put something out and it's, on the band's page or whatever and someone likes it they can be like oh man that's great and they'll hire you great could uh, potentially then you have your feed and you put what you like on that and then someone could see your feed and go oh that's great like i'm gonna hire that person so essentially you have two different portfolios that are working for you that could potentially get you jobs even though they're a little bit different of a view you know either way you win you're you're double promoting yourself And that's what I do. Like I, my website is completely, is all the stuff that I like, nothing that, you know, I post for the bands, like, you know, bands love huge shots of crowds, but to me, those are super easy to get. And anyone could take that photo. So none of those are on my website. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, is, is there a point as an artist where you do have to kind of stand your ground and, you know, I'm sure we could think of an extreme example that people would say no to, but everybody would say no to. But is there something specific to you that maybe an artist would go too far where you'd be like, you know, I don't even want my name on that. Or has it happened? <laughs> has it happened? Um, I mean, somebody turns the clarity up to 300 and says, this is perfect. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it would be an example. We're like, whoa, 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 whoa. It looks like you just got your first iPhone. <laughs> I haven't taken a stand no but i could see some people doing it but once again it goes back to i'm the person that just goes with the flow (laughs) like and that's why bands keep me around i think because i just do what they want like i do what i want and then i give them what they want and then everyone's happy has there been a time where they kind of tell you what they want but you're like all right i know what you're saying but i feel like i can show you something even better And you kind of interpret that and give it back to them. And they're like, that's exactly what I wanted. (laughs) Exactly. Oh my God. I've had so many times where it's like, this isn't right. And then I will give the same thing back. And it's, (laughs) this is it. You did it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Glad you can learn from me. And it's like, (laughs) yeah, it's kind of frustrating, but that's like, that's the thing with working with artists is they're finicky as And I try to think about it as if I were to hire someone, I would want it exactly how I want it, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I have, like, I did a bunch of live streaming during the pandemic and I had a bunch of videographers and we did like six camera shoots of shows and I was the main camera and I thought I did great, you know, because I know what I like. And then I had all these other people and sometimes we started out doing them for free. So there are people that, you know, like one of our production assistants, her son, like wanted Mm -hmm. to get into video. So I was like, here's a camera, (laughs) you know, and I'm teaching him and I'm like, oh, this is cool. He shoots differently, not like a photographer. It's pretty cool. 
but also I have to teach him a little bit about how I want it. And I'm like, Oh no, I'm, I'm the band right now. (laughs) I'm the band telling these people how to do their job. And I could see how this could crush their souls, but I'm still going to tell them what I want. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I get it a lot more now. It just goes back to, yeah, I'm just going to say yes to whatever you want because it's your face. It's your social media. They're your fans. Whether you know what they want more or not than I do is up to you. Well, I like your kind of openness and your flexibility and you're not very rigid. And it sounds like, you know, for your career that has really, you know, allowed you to do everything that you've done. And I like that we started off this interview by you just being like, I work with my favorite artists because that makes me so happy. Like that must be so easy to show up to work every day. I mean, I'm sure it's hard in its own oh, ways, yeah. but it must be so nice to be like, I get to listen to new metal all day. Yeah, <laughs> no, it is cool. I have to say the only thing that is kind of like, that seems like work is when you are shooting the same tour for a couple of years, you know, it is rough to try to find something new out of the same thing 200 times. And yeah. that's not, that's the hardest part, honestly. Does it need to be new? Um, for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, no, that and, and that's the thing. It can't be too new because yeah. we know what the band likes and we're giving the band what they like. So we can't stray too far from the path, but I sort of throw some shots in there that I like and they do still end up picking the same ones all the time, which like. is fine. But I'll post the cool ones on my page. It's cool. I'm to Paris's page. She knows what's best. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I just overall, I admire your ability to be flexible and work with everybody and kind of balance the quote unquote egos. I know how important that is. And it's cool to hear, you know, how much success you've drawn from that. And I think if there's anything anybody can take from this, it's that working on your photography is important. Don't get us wrong. But really, if there's anything I've learned from you, it's like so much just about how you interact with the people you work with on a daily basis. Right. Yeah. They're, they're paying you. Like, that's the thing. Like if you're, (laughs) if you're going out for free and you're trying to have a good time, do your thing. Like you're getting this for free. You get what you get, but their your whole entire job in your life is to take photos for money. So, I mean, if it is, it's a trade, which it it is exactly. So you should give them what they want. That's that's what it is. All right. And before we finish up here, I think the the, if I could leave people who are photographers, I think one of the questions and one of the things people struggle with the hardest, which I know you were talked about at the beginning is how do they go from being the free photographer to asking for money? Like, is that a question they should be asking? Are people going to offer it? Or what does that look like in practice? And maybe you can go over an example you've done yourself. It's difficult because it's hard to pitch yourself and then be like, and then convince someone that they have to pay for what you're offering when there are people that do do it for free and you might do it for free. And there's, there's a difference between like, I for sure still shoot shows for free that I want to. It's just because I enjoy it. And if they like them and then it turns into something that's awesome. Um, it's always, there's always like a, you know, you have my number if you want anything. And then if they hit you up, then you give their price, but it's hard to go to someone when you're just starting out saying, oh yeah, here's what I do. And there, this is how much it costs. And they're like, oh no, (laughs) it's, it's very easy for them to say no. So I think you have to just kind of read the situation. If they come to you for sure, try to charge them 100%. Like you've got the bargaining power. Exactly. But if you're going to them and you're doing it because you want to, that's a different thing. If you're building your portfolio, great. I mean, when you get to a point where you don't need to build your portfolio anymore, like us, like I have way too many pictures. I don't need to. I don't do anything for free when you come to me. (laughs) Unless it's for Lady Gaga. Yeah, I would. Well, that's the thing. She has money, (laughs) you know, so. No. She can afford. And that's the other thing, too. People are like, how much should I charge for this? And it's hard to tell them how big is the band because that shouldn't matter. (laughs) But it does, you know. And I think the best way to wrap your head around it, and you could probably agree, is the photos have more impact the larger the artist is. Therefore, they are worth more money and the people can afford it because they're more impactful, you know. Exactly. 100%.
So yeah, it's it, there's so many so many ways to, to break in and to try to make money. And then it's funny sometimes I'll if I don't really want to do something, I'll charge more. Yeah. And then they're, they're like, yes. You're like, whoa. And then whoa, they're whoa. like, yeah. You're like, they're like, yeah. Okay. And then I'm like, all right. <laughs> and then I'm okay with it because it's like a good payday. So oh, it's man. all. I wing so much stuff and I shouldn't say that, but I totally do. I'm like, how much money can I get out of this person? And then I put it out there and then they're like, cool. And I'm like, oh, so that's how much money you have. (laughs) Yeah. I think that's the name of the game for creatives in music industry is just, you know, some jobs you get paid one X and sometimes you get paid 10 X. And it doesn't mean that one's more important than the other. It's just the pay scales and it's often irrelevant to the job you're doing. It's just, how big is this artist? And for it's sure. cool to hear so many things that I think about, put it into words by yeah. you <laughs> because they make more sense and it validates a little bit. It's like, oh, I'm not crazy. Harris came no, to these conclusions crazy. too. It's just hard. It's hard to talk about because a lot of people don't like talking about money, which blows my mind. I don't understand it. Like, let's all get more. Yeah. I'll talk about it all day. Can we unionize the creative industry within the music world? Is that a thing? (laughs) Would just the whole people who Uh, do it for free kind of take over? Or can it be like everybody, this is how much you get a week. Don't say yes to anything else. I feel like we all know each other. It's hard because I give advice. People ask me for advice all the time. And I'm like, that is a $1,500 a week job. Do not take any less than that. And I know that they're not asking for that because they're scared they're scared to not get it you have to be okay with not getting it yeah (laughs) it takes balls but it's you know you got to eat yes and i I, connor will uh attest to this but i tell connor before we pitch a budget for anything that he wants to do i was like the first thing you have to come to terms with is that you might not get this gig otherwise you have no bargaining power if you really really want it i understand but then you have no power and they can pay you whatever they want so, yep. yeah, you're right. You got to oh, yeah. eat, though. You're right. Got to eat. Yeah, I do. I give the real price. It's, if it starts out with a real pli- price, then they know how much you're worth. And if they want to negotiate down, it's up to you to decide how much you want to eat. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Well, cool. I mean, talking about food is definitely a good way to end this podcast, I think. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming on here, Paris. This was great. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, it was nice to kind of... I've, I've noticed that I get to hang out with people and talk about things that I wouldn't really talk about even if we hung out. Like, there's no way we'd have a conversation like this for an hour if we were on tour. We'd be like, all right, what'd you do today? Yeah. <laughs> you want to go to catering? Should we yeah, eat dessert? Go to catering? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. What shots? Did, did you get the jump shot today? Did, did you, you get, get the it? shot? Yeah. That's all you wanted. <laughs> well, cool. Thank you so much for coming on here. I look forward to hopefully seeing you in real life on tour. If Limp Bizkit, Godsmack, or Newfound Glory in the area, I'm going to hit you up. To see if you're on tour with them, not just to not just to get in. I want to hang out. Just get in. I don't care. (laughs) That's the thing. Like when you're (laughs) that's it's it's weird to me. If you're friends with someone and you ask them for tickets and they don't give you them, what is the point of being in the industry? I give (laughs) everyone tickets that I that ask. I go, You want tickets? You want to go to this? I ask for favors. I just do it. What is yeah. it, it's nothing to me. It doesn't cost you me. You want to laminate? You want to bring your yeah. mom? That's cool. You wanna you want a parking spot? All right, cool. <laughs> you want to take a shower with Sully? Go right ahead. Go right oh in there. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right, Paris. Shower shoes, no shower shoes. What's your vibe on tour? We gotta know. It's gross, but I don't shower shoes. You don't shower don't or you do don't it. shower shoes? Oh no, I don't shower at all. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't use shoes. I don't. I just don't. It's it's disgusting, but whatever. Also, your whole don't shit on the bus. My boyfriend does it. He's like, you know, you regularly, can, right? Yeah. He goes, I do it. I don't care if there's a grinder on there. I do it. That goes against the whole vibe of the podcast. We're supposed to be a team and everybody's supposed well, to work together. That he's not on there. I, well, you should have him on and ask him about it. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing's just about soiling. We did have an uh, artist who came on here and his first thing he said was, I don't know what kind of buses you guys are touring on, but we pay enough money that we can poop on the bus. <laughs> and that's how he started. I was like, fair enough, man. Fair enough. But I agree. It's that I grinders on every bus. Come on, guys. We got to move past this. It's 2022. <laughs> it's COVID's out here. We got to be pooping on bus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good place to end it. Yes. Thank you good so much. Place. And uh, take it away, Kevin. <laughs>